UK property is so scary. Will I lose money? Yeah, those that buy UK property are cuckoos. Hey Sean, you know what? Buying UK properties, right, is so scary because we are Singaporeans and these are foreign properties. I think it's of course natural to think that way. Lah. I mean, if someone who's living a British uh, national, right, want to buy Singapore property, they also find it scary. You buying into Malaysia property also scary, ma. or Malaysia want to buy into Singapore property also scary. I think it's the scary, this word, right, is basically it's only scary because you do not know what's happening on the other side. So you see, uh, if, it, if it's a UK national buying a new UK property, right, is it scary? But I don't think so. If you're Singaporeans buying Singapore property, is it scary? Definitely not. So the thing is that the property didn't change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically your mindset, right? I think, I think, and understanding what is the loops or what are the taxes or what are the how do you even navigate around FX risk, etc. I think that's that's something that is more important to understand because the reality is this, right? Is there people that invest in UK, buy UK property and make money? Yes, hundred percent. What is there? People that buy UK properties and lose money and lose a lot of, a money. Lot of money. Also got what? But is there a lot of people who who buy Singapore properties and make money? Definitely. And is there people who buy Singapore property and lose money? Hundred percent. Yes. It's all in the news every single day. Right. I mean, I mean, you're able to see wow, top losses and top 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 wins. Right. It, it happens everywhere. Right. But the key thing here is this: is that it's really under going really understanding the market knowing what to buy all right so that we are always on the camp of winners rather than losers hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. all right and of course i i, I also understand a few main key i mean a few things is that for example let's talk about a few main concerns number one forex risk hmm. right obviously the pound has not performed the best in the last 10 years right it went for two plus now it's about 1.7 yeah, so of course it dropped, right? But you must understand this one component over here, and that is why we have always stress under the I quadrant, right? It's the real stress to actually take on a loan. If you take on a pound loan, you are still hedged in terms of risk when it comes to FX. Will there still be risk? 100% yes, right? But we can never predict what is going to be the currency moving forward in the next 10 years to come. Could pound go back to 3 to $1, sing dollars? Maybe. Would my pound become 1 to $1? $1? Maybe we do not know, all right? But that is then speculation into FX risk itself. But the key is understanding how to actually then navigate this FX risk by then taking on a pound loan so that we limit our risk when it comes to Forex exchange. And of course, the moment that you exchange a pound, my main job as an investor is to continuously grow my pounds, all right? So that I make profit over there. I think another point is that uh, if the pound actually drops, right, it also means that it's more expensive it's for the pound, right, to use pound to buy raw material worldwide. That's true. So in other words, right, the cost of building the same house in oh. terms of pounds oh, yeah. have to go up. Have to go up. Yeah. Exactly. So if the pound currency devalues, the pound property or the new builds, right, will have be even higher price. And if you currently own a, a UK property, right, it means that it has to go up because the cost of replacement of a property has gone up. Yes, and especially if you have a 70 to 80% loan on your new built property, let's say in, in UK, right? What does this mean? This means so technically your debt also shrinks hmm. in comparison since you're earning sing dollars, right? So, so everything is hedged because you take a pound loan. Of course, take a Singapore loan there in this different story, 100% on, on risk when it comes to of course, FX. FX uh. So number one thing, when you're buying a UK property, should you be borrowing in Sing dollars or borrowing in pound? Definitely 100% please borrow in pound, guys. All right, so I think that's the number one rule, uh, right? When you want to invest in overseas property itself, yeah? So now, of course, I think I still understand, yes, the next big question will be like, hey, wow, UK property, very far, don't know what, how to manage and things like that, right? I think that's, that's then it becomes, knowledge becomes very important to understand how how usually you find tenants, how how is the system over there uh, working, right? And, and, and if you really understand how property works, right, there, there are things such as property management company out there to then, of course, help you manage your tenants, help you collect a renter and ultimately, help you even structure out your taxes, all right? Then ultimately, of course, then paying off the remainder itself. So, but so, so I would say, it's, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's very sad sometimes to, to hear to hear people just say, hey, UK not good or uh, generalize something to be not good when you do not have experience in it. Let's do it that way. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just give you an idea. Like, like actually, a lot of people say Singapore properties are no good. Don't yeah. invest in real estate. Don't take on a loan in Singapore itself. And uh, 
a lot of them don't own properties in Singapore. And yep. it's, them, it's weird to listen to people who are not doing it about how to do it. Yeah. So the same thing, if someone who says UK not good, but do not even have a single UK property. I then think even if you have like one, two or three, right, you also not might not even have the, a, You might not even you have a, a, a good enough data to really see is it good or bad, right? But especially for those that do not even have a single UK property that say UK bad, are you guys? Why you want to waste time hearing to that rubbish, right? I mean, that's the reality over here, right? So he, they, don't, they probably do not even know how the taxation work in UK. They probably don't even know one single contact that, that, that helps them rent out a property in, in UK. So, so why want to listen to, to, to such things, right? So, so what's the lesson over here? What's the moral of the story? I think the moral of the story is that definitely, number one, you want to hear advice, you want to hear about what's good or bad. I think number one is to hear- Qualify. Yeah, qualify. Is this person even qualified to talk about it, right? Yes, maybe I might be very good at property investment in Singapore. That doesn't make me an expert in property investment in UK, nor property investor in US, nor property investment investor in Malaysia, whatever it is, right? Likewise, the other way around, if I'm an expert in UK, doesn't mean I'm an expert in Singapore, right? And so on and so forth. And then if you talk about asset classes, so you very good at investing in Singapore residential property, doesn't mean you're very good at investing in commercial property, doesn't mean you're very good at investing in industrial property, right? So I think there are just so many layers of maybe and, and things like that, that that i think it's better to do your own due diligence i mean always give something a fair chance for example if you're going to invest in stocks you want to give it a fair chance without hearing from the older generations in the fact of how much have they lost before how much they've made before or hearing you know, give you a fair chance right go and do your own due diligence research why do people make money what are the methodologies right and then from there then base your decisions based on of course, all this research. Hey, you know, there's uh, some interesting things that I read, right? And I think it is very, very useful. And it, it's a bit related to stocks and it can be related back into properties provided you know the right way of doing mm -hmm. it. Let me share with you this yeah, bonus sure. tip. Uh. Okay, later you pay me some cash. Okay, okay let's see how useful this advice is first. Oh, la, <laughs> give me some pressure. Okay, so I read about this uh, article, ah. right? About Warren Buffett, right? Buying into uh, Japanese equities. That's so he was buying some trading houses in uh, in Japan, right? That give uh, like a 6% and you yes okay so they have like a dividend policy yep. and what so right and the interesting thing is right for one buffer right in Berkshire Hathaway right there's still a lot of cash he has a lot of cash uh, mm. like that you had in US dollar that can be deployed but when he bought all these like uh, equities of these Japanese companies right he borrowed in yen to buy these companies and get this 6% uh, you and he has zero forex risk Mm. He borrowed in full. That's true. Yeah. Just true. So he's making 6% and maybe his interest to borrow yen is maybe 1 plus percent. Correct? So yes. he's still netting, netting a 4.5% or, or more. And right? there's zero yeah. forex. And there's zero forex. Yeah. So what's my point over here? So you see, uh, when we are talking about UK properties, right? If you are able to reach uh, like private banking or wealth banking, right? It's still possible to borrow directly in pound. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's you borrow in point. pound for the down payment to buy the property, right? But you take the loan on the balance 70%, right? So what does this mean? This means that the entire 100%, right, is hatched and zero forex risk. Ah, so that's gold nugget over there, guys, all right? So if you're afraid of forex risk, how, pass or not? Pass or not? Not bad, la, not bad, not bad. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, okay, I treat you, I treat you one meal. Okay, it's recorded, <laughs> okay, good. Not bad, not bad, not bad, right? I think this is, I mean, gold are golden tips. I mean, I mean, why, why we, I mean, the main thing over here, what's the key? The key here is that, you know what? Everywhere there are winners and losers, mm. all right? It really doesn't make sense to just say something is good or bad just because you heard experiences from someone who might not be very good at it, mm. right? It can, it, this falls all the way down from stocks investing, all the way down to in property investing throughout the world, all right? And, and maybe even in business and so forth. Everything in life, everything in life, right? So, so, so I think the key here is that, as I said, you want to do your own due diligence. You want to understand it and not just hear from someone who have no experience talking about it, right? And then that, that frames your knowledge or, or, or what you think about about that investment vehicle itself. Mm. Yeah, so remember guys, there are always winners and losers in every single investment out there. All right, the key here is that, can we then have enough knowledge to always be on the side of the winner? I hope you learned something from this video. Yeah. See you. <laughs> hey, so, Sean. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay